Hey, hey everyone, welcome to Luna Celine Creations. Thanks for stopping by the channel and happy holidays to you all. So this year I did some more painted snowman mason jars and I think they turned out kind of cute. I'm gonna show you today how to do this full bodied snowman. And I also did a winter wizard gnome this year with snowflakes and sparkles. I'll save him for another video. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna do is obviously paint your jars. Uh, I'm doing a red one here. I have a green one and a dark bluish purple as well. Um, you can do whatever kind of Christmas colors you want. The snowmen look good against any color, really. I've done them in tan, uh, light blue, purple, you know, the sky's the limit, whatever colors you like. And I'm using a pouncer to apply the paint, uh, a sponge pouncer, any kind of a flat round sponge applicator. You can do it with brushes as well. Um, it just gives it a different look when you use the, the sponge. It gives it almost a textured look to the surface of the paint. And the pouncers are especially great for doing circles. So when you're doing your snowman, which you'll see later, it just makes it really easy to get a nice circle. Because sometimes it's hard to paint a circle <laughs> on, a, uh, on a curved surface. So just carry on. This is the second coat. Obviously I'm doing, um, I do the bottom at the very end. Uh, you can leave the bottom unpainted as well, but I usually just do it the same color at the very end. Uh, I hold the rim and just go around and around and around, as you can see, and then stick your hand in the jar so you're not touching the paint as much as you can anyway. Okay, next I'm doing the dark blue one, dark bluish purple. Um, I actually wasn't happy with how dark that first coat was, so I went over it with more um, like a midnight blue. It's just a little more festive, a little brighter. So uh, we just cover that up. You can do that if you don't like the first color of paint, you can just go, go ahead and and change it up with you know similar similar color you can also distress these once they're dry i'll show you that uh, with the green one i ended up doing a little bit of a different technique and distressing it but Okay, next up we have the green jar. And for this one, I chose a shade called Deep River Green. You can use any kind of green, Christmassy green, forest green, whatever color you like. And I'm gonna do the inside of the jar with this paint, as opposed to putting the second coat on the outside of the jar. This is just a little bit of a different style that I, uh, I do sometimes. So I have a long handled flat brush and just simply load up your brush and paint the inside of the jar. Get all the surface covered. The brush strokes uh, don't, it doesn't have to be perfect the way you're doing this um, because what you end up doing after is once the inside of the jar is all coated and covered with, with your color, you just add a little bit of water and I just did it right over my kitchen sink so I don't have it on camera. I just add a little bit of water and swirl it around the paint and water mixture and then uh, just pour it out into a container that you're gonna discard. And that way you can start working on your design on the outside right away. You can also um, grab a blow dryer and, you know, on low and just um, blow it in there if you, if you really want it to dry faster. You can do that for the outside too. Anytime you're working with acrylic paint, you can, you can use a blow dryer to do that. Okay, now I'm just taking a uh, fine grit sandpaper to the outside of this green jar, and I'm just gonna distress it. Um, I normally just do the bumps around the corners, um, the round part, um, and then of course I do the letters if it says mason jar on it. Actually, the red jar is not even a mason jar. It was just a, a, a jar I had in my kitchen that had some uh, canned fruit in it. 
um, so you can use any jars you want. The, the mason jars are nice, you know, the canning jars, because they have the, the writing, they look really rustic. And so you just take your sandpaper if you're gonna do some distressing and rub over the lettering and a little bit on the corners, uh, as little or as much as you'd like, and you can do the rim as well. Um, if you're planning on putting a lid on these, I normally don't, but sometimes you can. You can, people like to paint the lids sometimes. If you're going to do that, then I suggest not painting the rim at all or really sanding it off after um, because the thread of the cap won't, won't work properly if it's uh, painted. Okay, so we're gonna go and uh, get started on our snowman. And I'm gonna do this demonstration on the green one. I'm using regular craft paint, acrylic paint, water-based. I love using these paints because they clean up so easily. I'm not like using uh, oils. <laughs> and then I'm using a pouncer. Again, I've got a clean one because I'm going with the white paint to make my little snowman head and body. You can just do the snowman head. You can do two circles or three circles. You know, your snowman can be wide or skinny or whatever shape you like. I've actually got two different types of whites here in mixing, but <laughs> they're a little bit off. Off white, bright white would be nice to excuse the commotion in the back as I'm doing my voiceover. My cat and my dog are play fighting. <clears throat> it's always a skid around here with those two. Okay, so I'm just going to go in here with the pouncer and load it up. Place where I want my head to be. Try to center it, you know, on the one side. And press. Make the second circle and then just go ahead and widen it out a little bit for the body. And then for the bottom one, same thing again. As I said, you can do it with just two circles if you want. Or three, or just one circle and do a snowman face. These are really fun to do. I love painting snowmen. And I think they make great small gifts. You know, they make great teacher gifts co-workers and they're really just a fun project to do if you have kids you can do them with your kids my son and I did a couple last year and he was six at the time so that was pretty cute the way his turned out and it would be like a keepsake you can use these in your kitchen to hold your kitchen utensils. You can use them for makeup brushes, paint brushes, pens, pencils, anything, anything you want. And if you wanted to give it as a gift, you could put the lid on it, paint the lid, <clears throat> and then, you know, tie it with a little bow or a little piece of jute cord or ribbon. And then you could fill it with, say, like Hershey's Kisses or candy canes or anything like that. And then the person has the, the candy inside and then also has the, the jar for decoration after. So I've got two kinds of orange there. I'm just going to make a little skinny triangle shape for the nose and point it upwards a little bit. 
and then I used a combination of uh, black and brown for the mouth and then the eyes I ended up doing black and then a little bit of blue and white make the eyes I make them a little bit small and close together I think that looks cute and then I also put little eyebrows on it after I do a squiggly line mouth on this guy you can do just dots if you want to make it easier <clears throat> you can do excuse me a little bit of a squiggle there and turn it into a little smile it's already starting to look cute you can add a hat if you'd like doing a top hat on this guy as you can see I'm using a, uh, a liner brush to do the detail work for the the face and the hat just a nice thin good quality liner brush uh, it gives you a, a good amount of control to do the, the small bits and the details on your snowman Now, if you didn't want to do a top hat, you could leave him bald. You could put earmuffs on him. You could put, uh, you can make a snow lady. You know, you could do a, a pink hat or a black hat with a pink flower or, you know, creative license, well, whatever you want your design to be. It's up to you. This is just a guideline. So here I'm just doing my three buttons. These don't have to be perfectly round because originally snowmen had right, lumps of coal. I added a little bit of uh, a powder blue to the buttons, just a few little dots or specks just for an accent color because I I'm going to make his scarf um, powder blue and then a real, real pale pink in like a um, an AA pattern. <laughs> Sorry, no, an AB pattern. <laughs> I'm thinking about my kids' math, second grade math class. AB pattern. So blue, pink, blue, pink, blue, pink. Anyway, um, again. Color choices are all up to you. But I just thought that the powder blue, it's a nice, uh, Christmas, not Christmassy, but you know, snowy color. So there I'm working on the scarf, you can see. I'm just um, making squares. They don't have to be perfectly square. Just go around his neck and then go down the one side with the one color. And then after that dries completely, then uh, go in with your second color. And then make some tassels on the end with both colors for the fringe of the scarf. Okay, now I'm going back in with my pale pink color. It's just a really nice soft light pink. And filling in the second part of my scarf pattern in between the blue squares, wobbly squares, rectangles. If you wanted to make a plain scarf and use one color to make it simpler, you can easily do that. And sometimes I make them with polka dots, stripes, uh, skinny stripes, fat stripes, whatever. Oh, and then I did forget to mention around the base, all the way around the jar, 
I used the pouncer and made like a snowbank type of type of thing. You can do that or leave that off. That's up to you. As well on the green part of the jar, um, I did it off camera, but um, I just dipped um, a toothbrush, an old toothbrush in my uh, white paint and used my finger to just make a spatter pattern and spray the white onto the onto the jar so it ends up looking like a almost like a stoneware with those white specks and you know just makes it uh, look like a little bit of a snowy sky it gives it some some detail and then for your snowman arms you're going to take a brown acrylic paint and just make little sticks make a v on the end and then afterwards highlight the top of the arms with some white okay and here's how our little snowman turned out i think he's super cute and great for the holidays and for the whole winter really not just for christmas time so when you're done painting uh, leave him for about 24 hours and then you're going to want to use some type of a sealant on it whether you use mod podge or a spray sealer uh, it's up to you and then uh, you can tie a little piece of jute around the top or a ribbon anything you'd like just for a little decoration and uh, that's it for today's video guys i want to wish you all a very happy holidays from all of us here at luna celine creations take care see you in the next one